Okay. So, all right, guys, we're, we're really um, trying to um, cope with what's going on here today. I don't know where you guys are at, but where we're located here, we had a really big um, storm overnight and stuff in all of our, well, our campuses are separated by like no. over a hundred and some miles and stuff. And um, I live in a rural area, um, hey. reservation hey. adjacent to where my campus is and stuff. So um, actually all our campuses were shut down today and stuff. So um, we were kind of really struggling you know, on how to make sure that we were able to do our uh, workshop today um, because we, we don't have a lot of the, um, well, actually we're broadcasting, or we're right here in my sister's kitchen. In, in, in the Winnebago Tribal Territory in Northeast Nebraska, in my sister's home here in her kitchen. So that's where we're at. We're going to try and go. So one of the things why, um, well, I'm, no, I, I, I'm known as the Native Nutritionist, nutritionist you know, um, I'm a science and math teacher at my, um, my college. I teach at the Nebraska Indian Community College in um, Macy, Nebraska. <clears throat> and um, we service the um, the tribal communities in Northeast Nebraska. Yeah. There were there's uh, three um, reservations located there, or three um, tribal territories located there. So, and that's where I come from. So one of the things what, why I like um, this this subject or topic came up for our um, to talk about and do a workshop on was because of. Um, how do we say the influence of the Western diet on, on the health of our native people here? A lot of the stuff that I, I talk about is because of, um, I became a, a caregiver to my relatives when I was 13 years old because of the um, effects of the um, diabetes and stuff. And so that's what um, kind of like my mission is today is that I, I talk a lot on a, about the return to our traditional foods and stuff as a treatment for our diabetes and stuff. But I know that um, wheat isn't a traditional part of our diet and stuff. So that's why we, why this subject of the sourdough came up because um, when we were when we were colonized and stuff, um, and we were given this white flour in the lard and stuff, and that's what we came up with with was with the um, fry bread and stuff. And so that's what I call it. I refer to it as um, as uh, Indian lemonade, you know, how they say it, when life gives you lemonade or lemons, you make lemonade, you know? So that's kind of what I think about fry bread is. And so um, a lot of people had asked us about um, when we were asking for topics to cover in our different workshop, extension workshops here at um, NICC, that was one of the things that people had asked us about making fry bread and stuff. And for me, that's not really, I don't feel that's really a thing that I need, I should be talking with, with people because that is, um, those are, those are things that are, should be based upon um, your family connections and stuff like that. Maybe someday we will be able to talk about that more and stuff, you know, but right now why I want to talk about this is because I know that, we're not gonna um, really quit eating the, the bread and stuff like that. But I just want us to um, be aware of more healthier options or other options that we have. Um, because um, like what, what most of us think about when we, 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 we think about like the, the store-bought um, bread and things like that. I and mean, even if you were to go look on your shelf right now and take your, your loaf of bread down and look at that, you can see, you know, all the different um, preservatives, additives and stuff like that, all the different sugars and stuff that are added into there. And, you know, that, that really can have, um, as those things build up in your body, you know, that they can have a detrimental effect to our health and stuff like that. But I don't want to get into all of that kind of stuff. What we want to talk about more is about the, um, the um, bread and stuff. So, um, this is what I, I talk about is uh, we want to explore healthier options um, besides like the commercial bakery. So then the next step above that would be like our artisanal breads and stuff like 
that we can like buy maybe at Panera. Like that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about there that wouldn't have all the additives or the homemade breads, you know, that we make and stuff. But those are still really um, loaded with the, how do you say, the simple carbs. And that's that's um, why I like to talk about this sourdough because of the, of the nature of this sourdough, it is, um, well, wait, wait, let me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me talk about these other options here, what was talking about. So then another thing um, that we could talk about besides that, uh, maybe a more healthier option would be like, um, oh, the sprouted wheat bread. And um, I, I've taught classes on that one before too. And that is where we take the actual wheat berry, you know, the whole wheat seed like or grain like that. And it is sprouted just like you sprout um, alfalfa sprouts or bean sprouts like that. And, and um, that method, um, you actually need a, a, a um, food processor to do that because you, you would um, put your ingredients in that food processor and mix it. And that makes a really good loaf of bread. And th that is really like really live food. And then another option like that where you would make... Um, is the Ezekiel bread. And um, there are different um, recipes that you can research and get to. And that those contain different um, grains, legumes, and um, sprouted uh, wheat and stuff like that, different sprouted grains in it. And so, and most of the time they do sell it commercially and stuff like at the different um, whole foods and health food stores that, and, um, and they're usually found in the refrigerator, refrigerated section or, you know, the freezer section. So, um, and those are very nutritious options and things like that, you know. Um, but what I wanted to do is talk about the sourdough and why that, um, for us as Native people, why I like to um, think of that as the best option, just because of the effect that it, it doesn't affect our glycemic index. You know, so what is that? That's talking about our blood sugar. And th that's where the um, the harm comes in when we're talking about the, the effects of diabetes and stuff is when our, our blood sugar spikes, you know, and goes down those rises and falls. That's what causes the um, damage on a cellular level to our bodies and stuff. And so that's why I, I like to think about this, um, talk about this sourdough bread. So that's why I, I think that this is a good option for, for us as people and stuff. And then another thing that I like to think about is that um, right now, just the state of how um, of our country is in and stuff and how, uh, the uncertainty of, of our food supplies and things like that. And with this sourdough, we know that we can make it using just really basic things. And I'm gonna show you here that it's really just basic equipment that we can start out with um, and really basic ingredients that we can start out with and stuff. And, what, and I'm gonna, I wanna talk a little bit about how we're gonna do this. So if I was at, at our campus in Macy and stuff, um, we have an auditorium there with a, a, a kitchen facility on the side and we have big um, video screen on the other side and stuff. So usually like when, if we were doing a workshop there, I would screen video there and talk along with it and then do some um, actual demonstration there of cooking and baking and we would actually eat there and all that kind of stuff. So this today is like how we, we are trying to uh, cope with the things that we're going through today here. Yeah, we're adapting, we're adapting here. So, okay, so let's, let's just talk. So after that, um, I wanted to talk about, uh, let's just talk about um, ingredients first here. Um, so usually when we, we're doing our workshops and stuff, we, we um, get little kits ready and distribute them into the community. And then they'll be, well, um, because we've just been doing virtual this last year, right? Or the past, yeah, the past month or so. And so we've been, um, you know, doing it um operating like that recently but since um we weren't able to make it to campus today and we weren't able to um distribute out into the community and stuff we're making do with the things that we have here so a lot of the things that i talk about is because we have tribal food distribution um programs here and stuff 
what they call the um, United States food surplus, you know, and stuff. That's what, what a lot of us natives have um, um, access to here on our, in our homelands here and stuff that we use a lot of this. So right now, I'm just going to use this for demonstration. This is whole wheat flour that we get in our in our um, our food distribution food. But in real, when we're going to really do our our um, our starter, make our starter, we don't want to use this type of whole wheat flour. The organic flour has all the natural um, flora and fauna still on it, you know, with the whole wheat bran not being removed, all of that is still gonna be on there. And so that's why we are gonna use a, um, a whole, uh, yeah, organic whole wheat flour. Um, and, that, and that is just for the first step, we want a whole a organic whole wheat flour. And then when we feed it after that, we like to use, I like to use organic flour. This is just regular organic um, bread flour or else um, it depends on what type of really um, flavor and stuff you are looking for because a lot of the video and stuff, well, that's what I do. I review all the, do all the research and, and view the videos and take all the notes and all that kind of stuff and try and, um, present it to you in a, um, or use that and talk and present this to, subject to you in a more um, how do you say, digestible manner, you know, and instead of how, and it's always good for, what I always recommend is for people to go and do their own research and stuff. What I am demonstrating here is just really basic, simple stuff from things that I took from there. Okay, so then after that, we're going to, what we're actually going to need to start our starter um, is going to be one cup of whole wheat flour. And then beyond that, we are going to need like, you will need about seven cups of flour, either bread flour or all purpose. And I would, I would suggest organic for that also. And then the other component that we need for um, making sourdough starter would be um, some water and when and when I talk about water, um, it, it is actually important when we talk about um, chlorinated water and, and um, filtered water, bottled water like that, because we don't want to use the chlorinated water because that inhibits the growth of the natural, you know, biota there. So that's why we we want to use the bottled water and then um, our filtered water, or even if you have your own uh, well and stuff, that, that is fine. Just so long as it isn't chlorinated is, is what we're talking about. Okay, and then the other thing when it comes to the water is temperature. So when I do mine, instead of investing in a lot of equipment and stuff where um, costs are prohibited, prohibitive to some people. So that's why I, I like to uh, teach in a way where we can just use our hands and stuff. So that's what I use when I test my water, when I, I do my um, sourdough, I will, um, because we know that our body temperature 98.6, right? So like when we touch that water, we can basically tell if it's too hot, to, where, where it feels hot to our, our hands, we know that it is more than 98.6, right? So we don't, we just want it to be comfortably warm, like baby bath water, you know, like that. That's what it wants, we want it to feel like. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about here is that um, when we do our starter here, okay, I wanna get my starter up here. Okay. But um, what, what I really like to talk about is the equipment. So we did a, we did a workshop here um, several months back where we did some um, floral arrangements and stuff. And we had the, some of these containers left here too that we actually did our arrangements in. So you can see that they're like about, I would say maybe a quarter and a half over a quart here and they're straight sided, really heavy bottom here. And then this is what I used actually um, 
before at my campus when I started some starter. It's just a glass pitcher like this. But what I want you guys to make note of is right here is the, the shape on this side because this is gonna come into play when we're mixing and, um, and feeding our starter and stuff. It, it's gonna be much easier to mix and divide and stuff if we have a straight bottom like this. I mean, a straight sided vessel like this. And what also would be good is if you could have two of the same size or same size, but if not, we can also deal with that. And then what we also want is something to cover. So what I usually recommend and what I use is a um, just a flour sack dish towel because we we still need the gas, the air exchange to go on to. So we're not gonna cover these very tightly. And then the other thing that I wanna say is that like this type of thing, this is just a regular, um, it's called cover make, you know, uh, food, food container cover thing that you can buy at, at any dollar store or Walmart or whatever like that. But this is the larger size one. I don't want it to be really tight. Like, like I'll just show you right here. Cause like this one right here, this is the, the um, second to the largest size. And this kind of where it's at right here, it won't allow, I don't think enough air exchange to go on. So like this one, I would probably use the larger one here. You know, so it would be a little bit looser and all that. I'm just having a little bit air going on in it. So that's, um, so we want to get our equipment ready and stuff like that. But this is like the, the covers, they just look like shower caps or something, you know. You can get them at the um, dollar stores and stuff. So that's what I wanted to show about equipment and stuff. And the other thing that we, we need to use for uh, making the sourdough starter is we're going to need some measuring cups. And so to get it going, we're going to use a one cup and a half a cup, but, and then when I demonstrate to um, feed the starter, we're gonna use a quarter cup, okay? So, so I, why I'm doing this is I just want to show that it's just really basic equipment that you need to, that you can use to do this. The other thing is we need a good stiff, um, like silicone scraper, or rubber scraper, you know, like this. I usually use this one, it fits really good in there. But I just wanted to demonstrate this because this this just came in a regular little set that actually was a gift to me and stuff. So that's what I was going to say. It's just really just basic equipment. And the other thing that I always use is I, I will get a um a microwave safe um vessel like this so that I can make sure that I get this water to the right temperature that I want. Right, so I'm gonna microwave just a very little in here, and then I'm gonna add enough of the uh, uh, more filtered water, and I'm gonna be filling it like this so that I know that when it gets to the right temperature. And then I'm not gonna mix this water until right before I make this because I don't want it to cool off too much or anything. So I'm gonna move these things out of the way, and we're gonna get started with um, making our starter, okay? So, um, I think I'll just make it in this one right here. So one of the things that we, I recommend, and we can still, I didn't, I made sure I didn't wash the outside of this because I wanted to show you what I did here. When I was making a starter before and I mixed it, and this is what is recommended that I used one of the um, wax china markers, you know, um, to, to um, make the, write the level on here, or what also is recommended, you can use a Sharpie or permanent marker, but we'll do that after we mix it, okay? After we mix it. So this is, so the other part that I wanted to talk about is in reviewing these different things is also, I'm a train chef and I know this too from, from the other part, baking is more the most, uh, how do you say, scientific of the six different areas of food. You know, the, the more we, we have a little bit room to experiment and see like what flavors we like and all this kind of stuff. Because like the whole grain that we, some people use in their starter would be rye. Some people use spelt, you know, 
and different grains like that, different whole grains. So when, when we when we get a little bit more um, practice in this, then then I would suggest that you know you guys try all that. But this is <clears throat> so what I was just gonna do to demonstrate. I wanted to show you. So what they we say is we're gonna use scant one cup of flour and then half the amount of water. Okay, so that's why I say, and then we're um, what I want to do. Um, I think this is long hair here. Let me see. So it's going to microwave, and I have some it going on a pot here. Let me see if it's about the right temperature. No, so this is way warm here. I'm going to put a little bit more water in here until it gets to the right temperature. Yeah, okay, so this is about the right temperature here. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna move this scale. Well, what I wanted to do was just to weigh this, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this later because right now we're kind of getting behind here. Okay, so now that I have this, this, um, this glass pitcher that I'm, so we don't really wanna pack this flour or anything. And what they say is scat one cup, you know? And that's, this is, so let's put that in there. So I just want you guys to see what I'm doing here. And because I've been doing this and, and um, because of humidity levels and stuff um, in the air, moisture in the air, sometimes our flour is gonna absorb more liquid than other times. Right now, because we are in the, the winter months and we're using our central air and stuff, and the air is a lot drier, that we are going to need a little bit more water. So that's what I had noticed here when I was making this, is that um, we are going to need a little bit more than half the amount of flour. So here I go. I'm putting in one half a cup and just maybe a tablespoon more. OK. And this. And then all you need to do is really mix this down. Get to the bottom down there where it's kind of dry. And, and you can see right here, um, I don't know, yeah, I can see that it looks really dry like that. And that's all right. Maybe, maybe we might need just a wee bit more, not too much. We just want a wee bit because this is going to be dry. It might look really dry right now. We don't want, it's not going to be running or anything like that. Because after it sets, this is, or after it starts fermenting, this is going to kind of liquefy. It's going to, so then after this, if you can see where it's kind of a dry mix and stuff, dry kind of really tacky dough. So what I'm doing here is I'm going around the edge, pushing down. Okay. Okay, so this is the part right here where I would take my marker. And this is this helps when we're, we're cutting this and feeding our starter and stuff. So right here, I would like mark it right about here because I can see where that starter is at. Okay, so that's going to help when we're feeding. So we know what level we're looking at and how much it's rising because we want it when it's doing doing it's fermenting because we're going to uh, on the first part we're going to uh, three days we're going to feed it every 24 hours and on the fourth day we're going to start feeding it every 12 hours. And so we, that's what we're going to be kind of watching is when this rises up and stuff. So that's how we're going to tell like also if, if the um, temperature is correct. Because when we're doing this, we want to set this like it mostly like in a draft free area, nice warm one, you know, and what they recommend is 75 to 80 degrees. And so what they say, you might want to put it on top of your refrigerator or something like that, you know, 
Um, what I do is that because of uh, our central air right now and stuff, um, and we, we keep a, a, a pan of water on top of our stove all, all, um, all the time, you know, for the steam and stuff. So I usually keep um, my, my sourdough starter in the corner in the kitchen there, you know, near my stove where, the, where it's nice and warm and steamy at. So, and so that's what I would do right here. And so now we would need to cover our starter and put it in that warm place like that, okay? And so in, in one and 24 hours, we're gonna go back and we're gonna check it. Okay, this is a starter that is near fully developed here. And I've been feeding this one here every 12 hours. Okay, so then this is how I usually feed mine. If you're using the two, two, um, so if you wanna use a two vessel method, that's fine. But what I like to do, because it keeps the, uh, the process going, feeding the process here, I usually, well, this is what I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate here. So now we have the, the water here. So now we have the half a cup and the quarter cup. Okay, so now what I need to do is I'm gonna take and mix this up. Oh, yep, it kind of got dry on top too. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take out one half a cup. And if you, you can see, it's really kind of a messy kind of process and stuff. But I can tell you that once you're done, oh, this is, this is so good. The bread is so good. You know, if you know about um, sourdough bread, the difference um, in the taste and the texture is a lot different. It's known for its tangy, tangy taste. It's very chewy and the, the um, really crisp crust, crust on this bread. Okay, so look at here. I got, you know, best as I can out of, out of um, half a cup. Okay, so if you were using a two, Two um, vessel method, you know, where you're using two containers, you would put this other half in here, and which I will do probably today just to demonstrate. But and otherwise, if I didn't do that, what I would do is I would go and I would scrape all of this into a separate container um, that I used, like a um, um, just like a little quart dish or something that's covered, and I and I keep it and I gather it until and that's what i forgot there at my um when i came over here i forget yeah so then i would just gather this and you can use this right here you can we can i can share recipes with you you can use this to make different um pancakes waffles um breads quick breads you know that that kind of thing with this stuff okay so anyway and that's what you would do and you would store this until you get enough to use for your recipe, excuse me. So that's what we would do with this right here is put this aside in the refrigerator. Right now, okay. So now you see right here how it is kind of, still kind of has some spray beans and stuff in there. If I were to do, this is how I do the one, the one vessel pipe. Let's do it this way. I just want to demonstrate because it's get, um, this is going to come into play when you start doing your own and how and how you decide how you want to, what's going to be best for you, your working area, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's all going to. So okay, now after I have that half a cup back in here, and I want to make sure that this water is going to be warm enough, and I want to make I'm going to put a little bit of water, in. and we don't want this too hot because if we make it too hot then that will also uh, be detrimental to our uh, live um, yeasts and bacteria in here. Okay, so now we're going to do a quarter cup. Remember, we want a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. So here we go. Quarter of a cup and maybe about a teaspoon. Okay. And it's much easier if you do it in this order. If you put the water in 
with a half a cup of the starter. And then you can see here it's kind of, kind of, um, yeah, kind of lumpy and stuff like that. But this is what we're, where it's going to, why it's so important when you choose what, what, um, jar or dish or whatever it is that you're going to mix your sourdough with because see this is the process right here and it is kind of messy so that's what I why I wanted to show you this right here and that is how so you can see it's kind of breaking up in there okay and then this is where let me dry this one off this is where I would add my quarter cup, I mean my half a cup of flour. Remember I already put in, I put in a um, quarter cup of water. So now to feed it, I am putting a half a cup of flour. What I use is I'm using quarter cup of uh, bread flour and I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup of stout. So, oh my God, can you help me get this one open? <laughs> so I'm gonna ask what we're doing. I remember I'm not gonna level it or anything. It's scant, you know, I don't want it to be too dry or too wet. You know, it's... Okay, so now we're just mixing this in. Okay, so this is the actual starter. This is one that has been going for a little over a week here. And it, it's not quite ready. It's not quite ready. You can see how it is now after I mixed it, how, how it is kind of loose. That's, um, it's gonna loosen up way more than this after it ferments. Because what you wanna see is it, you're gonna see it rise up in here and then it's going to collapse down. So don't panic if you see it's all collapsed after 24 hours. That's part of the natural process there. That's why we're feeding it again, because it's it's going to need something to feed on it. Okay, so now this one here is ready to set in a warm place again. So right here... Okay, so what I wanted to also demonstrate here is that, like if we're using covered containers, we don't want to snap the lid on tight on it like that airtight. We don't. We just want to set it on there lightly so that that air exchange can still go on, you know? We have to think of this as a living, breathing organism right here, okay? So, all right, let me move this out the way. Okay, so let me wash my hands for a here. Okay. Well, what time are we looking at here? 630. 6.30, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, let's ask if, can we, um, yeah, I wanted to see if anybody has any questions in, so far on, like, um, starting our starter or feeding our starter, and then we'll talk more about baking, because what I'm going to say is right now, <clears throat> just because of the difficulties that we're dealing with today with our weather and all this kind of stuff, um, I will be um, going back to our campus and um, working with this, this sourdough and we're, I'm gonna actually um, demonstrate the baking process and we will put it onto this, um, mm -hmm. the video. this video, the workshop here, okay? So that you can come back and refer to it and see the different things. So the, the one that I wanted to talk about is um, 
the actual um, equipment that you might need when, when we're um, working with our dough and baking our bread and stuff. So one of the things that we want to look at when we're making our bread and stuff is that we don't want to um, incorporate too much more additional flour into there because that's when we get a really dry product and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so then this is what I wanted to show is that we are going to need, I would suggest that a lot, of, we probably all have this stuff at our house, right? You see me cover up the um, sourdough starter with is what I would suggest is you guys get a couple of flour side bread towels like this. Because this, um, when we talked about bread a couple of weeks ago, I had demonstrated about how to, um, where's your cutting board? Oh, that one, okay. Oh, it's that one, okay. It has a handle on it. Okay, yeah. But what, what I was showing is that um, before, what I would do is, and I have a much bigger cutting board at my house, is that I would wrap a cutting board, or else if you have a marble pastry board, this is what you usually use would be a marble pastry board. But right here, you can use a cutting board. I'm just using this. It's kind of small and everything, but I'm just trying to demonstrate this technique that I use. All you have to do is kind of wrap a cutting board kind of tightly like that. You want it not to be hanging over too much because it's going to be kind of messy with flour. So this is what I would do. And usually I would make a surface like this covered with a, a flour sack dish towel. And that way, when I'm doing my bread, I can just barely need a little bit flour on here and this dough it will not stick and stuff like that we can put a little bit right here and add it to our fingers when we need it so that's one of the things and the other thing that i was noticing when i was reading um doing the research on this sourdough a lot of them recommended a bench knife and i don't know if you guys all are familiar with these different things this one is um metal you know and we might not need this uh type of one for using for bread this might be used for chopping vegetables and stuff like that working with that but i know that this one right here this plastic one that i use this for my bread all the time i can cut my dough and pick things up because i usually don't make really big um pieces that I would need a big blade to lift things and stuff. I could use one at this size. And why I, wanted, why I brought this, this gift that my friend gave me is because in this set right here, it has a little, a small bench knife in it, right? Like this, see, it's um, silicone and stuff, has a nice cutting edge on it. So that's what I would recommend if you could get yourself something like this to use when you're forming your loaves and stuff. It helps so much when you're transferring to your board, to your pan to bake it, you know, because you don't want to disturb that outside crust so much, you know. So the, the, the type of product that we see in the different. And also I was going to say in this, um, in a lot of the, the video and stuff that I was looking at, they're talking about spraying their oil on and stuff. There's different ones that have, um, they talk about using avocado oil and all kinds of oh, organic avocado oil, organic cane sugar. But to realize that we can just use these basic things. And how I say that, this is just a regular squeeze bottle that you can use in your kitchen, you know? Um, and you would use um, put oil in this. And, you know, all you just need to do is put it on a few drops on top of your dough, make sure your fingers are oiled, you know, like that. You wouldn't need to use uh, invest in all of that type of spray equipment and all that and unless you really uh, get into your bread making there there's a lot of people that do that so um okay and the other thing that I was gonna say is that besides the uh, bench knives let's look at something to bake our bread in so one of the one the best things that I could I, I looked at I said oh my this is kind of okay would be something like this, a heavy um, covered Dutch oven 
that can go in the oven. I, so this one right here is um, metal so that it can be in the oven, you know. Um, we don't want anything with a plastic handle that can't be, we can't use to bake it. Because actually, um, because of the nature of the sourdough bread, there isn't a lot of sugars in it, you know. And so it does take some time and technique to develop that brown and that crust on your bread. And then have you ever noticed if you buy sourdough bread at, in, at the grocery store, how it is kind of lighter on the outside? But that's that's why, because there aren't those natural, I mean, the sugar in it that um, caramelizes and causes that brownness to, the, to, to our loaf. So that's why I wanted to talk about that. that this is really common, but a lot of the other things that we um, can bake on would be um, a lot of the sourdough um, they talk about is um, free form loaf. So what we would do is actually knead the dough like, and then we would um, transfer it onto a, a, a baking sheet. And we want um, usually a cookie sheet is good, like our unring baking sheet, and put some um, parchment paper on it. So that and and the other thing that they, uh, I know too when we make sourdough is that we need a sharp knife. And uh, some of the slides that, um, and the people that are really into the bread making and stuff, they have their their own like razor, like razor or scalpel, sharp knives like that or blades that they use just for making their bread. But for us, here we go. We I just have a regular paring knife that is super sharp and it is sharp enough to make the little um, vent cuts on top of our loaves before we do it. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you guys could try and get some of that equipment together and then um, get your sourdough started, your starter going like this, right? Correct. This one that I did today, tonight with the one cup of whole wheat flour, and half a cup of warm water. And then we're gonna feed it for three days. Remember every 24 hours, one half a cup of flour and one quarter cup of water. On that fourth day, we're gonna start feeding it every 12 hours. And that's gonna go up until it's ready to use as a starter. And the way that we know when it's ready to use as a starter, this. Okay, so I just fed this one, so I don't know how well this will work, but we know that if your starter floats, that this is, it's good to use for, it's, see, this one isn't ready right here because our start, can you see that, it, that it, yeah, it fell to the bottom there. So this isn't quite ready. I would, I would check it in, in probably two days. So that's what I'm thinking that probably by Thursday, I will bake um, a loaf with this and I will post it onto our, our site here and you can check. So what I would say for you guys to do is to get going on this right here, get your, your um, starter going and then check, do this test on it. And, and I would say, um, if you're in, have it in a nice warm area, 75 to 80 degrees, it should take about eight days, eight to 10 days. If it's in a cooler area, it's going to take more like 12 to 14 days to get to be ready. Okay. And then that's the, that's the test that you're going to do to see if it's ready to, to use as a bread starter. Okay. And I will also, um, hey, um, I know what, I have another question to ask. What type of bread would you guys like to bake? Do you guys like um, the regular white sourdough? Would you would you like a whole wheat? Would you like uh, an ancient grain? Because what I want to do is I want to include enough recipes in, in this um, workshop here for you guys to use your, your um, you know, the leftover stuff, the waste. We don't want to really call it waste, you know, because <laughs> we could always use this to make uh, the pancakes and stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to make sure that uh, 
your needs are addressed also of what what it is you wanted to make with your sourdough and stuff because um yeah we're just we're just trying to make make it through our, our challenges today and stuff and and presenting this workshop for you guys so um is there any other qu any questions hello Uh, yeah. Okay. When you feed it, when you're starting it for the first three days, you take you take a half cup. No. Yeah. Yeah. You take a half cup. Of, so you do that every single time you feed it. Yeah. Did you, you take the half with, cup out? Okay. Yeah. You use that half a cup to. That's the part that you're you're feeding. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. And for recipes, recipes, I'd like, I'd like a pancake recipe or a um, pizza dough, maybe. Can you make okay. pizza dough out of it? Sure, I like. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I would suggest is to get this going. And then I, I will post that onto this site here in a couple of days when I get this, when this is what is here is ready. And then we will, oh no, the other one yeah, is ready. And then. <laughs> That's why I used the wrong one. I tested the wrong one. That's the one I just mixed. Sorry about that. That's the one I just mixed. I have to see on it. Yeah, it's exploding. Oh, it, it's almost there because you just did you see it? It kind of it kind of, uh, yeah, it lingered, it, it, it wafted down, it, it didn't just drop all the way down. So I know that this, that's what I said, it's probably gonna be ready in two days because I have been keeping it in a nice warm spot. Nice. Okay. Okay, Angelina, is there any other things that we need to? Um, let me check. I'll check the chat really quick. I know we have some um, requests for recipes. So um, once we get that together, we can send all that information. We can email it to the people that have participated. Um, yeah, so we have a request for pancakes, pizza dough, English muffins, dinner rolls. Um, can you use it in cookies? I believe I've seen some recipes for cookies actually too. Okay, well, maybe we can add that. Um, once it's all complete and we finish the baking process and everything, we're gonna document that on the video and we'll include that with um, with the rest of this. We'll just add it on. And we also have some photos that we took during the process of um, how to take the, the, half, the half cup out and, and separate it and everything and how to feed it. We did uh, take pictures when we went and fed it over the weekend. So uh, we can include those also, just so you can have like a step-by-step when you want to go, when you want to feed your sourdough. So I wanted to um, add um, to, to go and do some of your own viewing, your own research and stuff. And I, I wanted to um, acknowledge that I got a lot of my um, my research and stuff from um, a site called Clever Carrot and um, the King Arthur Sourdough site. So there's, there's a lot. Um, the things that I shared aren't just from one side, it's from, um, you know, combining our, our knowing about the different things and actually practicing them and, and, and doing them here and, and being able to um, contribute like how, like, like say about the humidity here and stuff like that. So, cause that's something that I know about bacon and about flour and how, how it is here, how we have our, 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 our central air going constantly right now. And then I, the other part that I wanted to show is that just to remember that this is all real basic things that we all have in our kitchens probably right now at this moment. So it's not really something that we're going to um, struggle to do like if we were if we were caught without maybe we, we might have to wait for two weeks for a loaf of bread but <laughs> <laughs> But you know we can make we can make bread without yeast, without leavening agents and stuff by doing this and stuff. So, and then Angelina, was there any other? Uh, um, it looks like that was all of the questions. 
um, and it was about recipes. So we'll be able to get that information out. And um, I'll introduce myself, even though it's a little late. My name is Angelina Magro, and I work for the Center for Rural Affairs. Um, we do host these workshops. Um, and uh, our, our main focus is working on with the Omaha tribe in um, providing nutritional workshops and also helping to stimulate uh, small business in our rural communities and um, provide healthy nutritional options and, and also um, providing the skills for people that wanna try these things. So um, like LaVon had mentioned, if you have any suggestions for future workshops or ideas for different types of bread that you wanna do, um, make sure you send me an email um, and just let me know and I'll, I'll do what I can to get it scheduled and get a, get a workshop going. Um, also, um, I'll talk about a couple of the other workshops we got going on in the community. These ones are going to be um, in-person workshops. We're gonna have some uh, beaded earrings. We're also gonna be doing um, a series on star quilts. Um, but like I mentioned, those are gonna be in person. So if anybody is in um, Macy, Walt Hill, Rosalie, or even in Winnebago, you are welcome to join. And all of our workshops are free of charge. <laughs> and we usually provide um, some pretty good food, so I recommend making the trip. <laughs> um, but thank you all for joining us, and, and um, the video, once it's complete with the baking and everything, we will post it to um, our YouTube channel, our Center for Rural Affairs YouTube channel. Um, if you didn't know we had one, you can check it out. We have all of our workshops on there. Um, also workshops that are not just for Native communities. If you have people that are interested in beginning ranching, farming, um, starting small businesses, we have all kinds of resources available to everybody in our rural communities. Um, so go ahead and check that out. <laughs> but um, thank you all for joining us this evening and thank you, Levon, for presenting. Um, you're always a good presenter. And uh, <laughs> we look forward to baking that bread. So thank you all for joining and have a good evening. You too, thanks. Oh, the YouTube channel, it's the Center for Rural Affairs. Okay. And I can send that in. I'll, actually, I'll just email that information out to everybody that, that's here tonight. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay.